September 1945, the end of the Second World War. Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin appointed Georgiou Daesh as the head of the Communist Party of one of his vassal states. He was later usurped by dictator Ceausescu. These dictators committed horrible crimes to humankind. They put people in jail for no reason. They tortured and killed thousands of people. From some families, they took away everything they had and they ousted these families from the country. One of these families was mine, my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather. By this time, you probably think you're in the wrong talk. <laughs> What does all of this have to do with blockchain? Because blockchain is that thing about crypto and Bitcoin, isn't it? Yes, it is, but that's not all of it. And that's why I'm here today. I want to show you another side about blockchain that usually we don't consider so much. Because blockchain could have avoided and prevented some of the hardship and suffering that my family had to endure during that dictatorship. In one sweep, the dictator took away everything that my family had been building for decades and generations. The Communist Party, by force, took away the factory they owned and where they employed a lot of workers, and the house where they had been raised. From one day to the next, the dictator declared that this land shall now belong to him and his cronies, and not to us anymore. And he could do that because he had absolute control over the centralized land registry in that country. So his will was the law. And this is where blockchain comes in. A blockchain is a public and decentralized database, a ledger. And with that decentralization in mind, we could have decentralized and distributed the land registry to many computers all over the country and even the world. So no single malign actor or party could have manipulated that system anymore. And that is why, to me, blockchain is such a strong tool of democracy. So if people ask me, blockchain, that's about crypto and Bitcoin, to me, blockchain is about freedom. This is Moria, a huge refugee camp on the Greek island of Lesbos, where thousands of refugees are being kept in inhumane conditions. Doctors Without Borders even called it the worst refugee camp on Earth. The problem is that as a refugee, You can't really escape from these camps if you cannot prove your identity. And how do you prove that you are who you are without a passport? And so many times, these refugees have been taken away their passports by the very regimes they fled from or by the traffickers they trusted. Imagine if we had a digital, a decentralized identity based on our biometric data that nobody can take away from us. No regime, no dictator, no trafficker. This is, again, where blockchain can help us. With blockchain, we can create this. And this is, again, why, for me, blockchain is about freedom. A few years ago, I lived in Singapore to found my first startup. When I first moved there, I got invited to the house of a friend over for dinner. And in the course of the evening, I noticed a small side room just off the main living room. What I thought was a small storage cabinet was in reality the room where the maid, the housekeeper, lived and slept, a tiny room without windows. Her name was Maria, and she was an immigrant worker from the Philippines. She had moved to Singapore to earn some money to support her family back home in the Philippines. Whenever Maria wanted to send home money to her family, she had to go through various intermediaries each and every one of them, such as banks, money agencies, and so on, each and every one of them taking a cut of her hard-earned money. So in the end, once the money arrived with her family, days, sometimes weeks later, only a fraction of what Maria had sent would actually arrive. The whole situation is aggravated by the fact that in many rural countries and many rural developing countries, people don't even have access to basic financial infrastructure. 
What I mean is they don't even have a bank account. So how to even send them money? Again, this is where blockchain comes in. With blockchain, Maria can send directly from her cell phone in Singapore to her son's cell phone in the Philippines the hard-earned money directly, instantly and at quasi-zero cost. That way, Maria can spend more time with her family and has to, learn, has, has to work less. Again, blockchain is about freedom. Now you might say, well, that's all nice, but the Philippines are far away, and so is Singapore. How does that concern us? We're in a safe place like Austria. And indeed, we were lucky that we were born here in a prosperous and cozy country where we have access to clean water, to food, to a pension system, to social security, to bank accounts, and so on. But we have to realize that not everybody was born that lucky and that we are not the norm. We are rather the exception, not them. And that is why we have a moral obligation to help them. This looks a bit like a note from the board game Monopoly, but it's actually the currency of Venezuela. In this case, in the denomination of 500 million Bolivar. The problem with, with this bill is that you can barely buy a loaf of bread with it. This is the product of the country's hyperinflation that has been there for years. And it's, been, it's become so bad that if you go to work in the morning, the money you earn, by the time you get home on the same day, that money will be worthless. What has happened here? Again, a central party has abused its power. Somebody printed money, flooded the market with money, created hyperinflation, and by that created poverty and devastation in the country, so that many people had to leave the country for economic reasons. Again, blockchain could help us. Blockchain could decentralize away the power from one single central institution, in this case, the corrupt central bank that printed the money, and distributed it back to the people. With blockchain, code is law. That means whatever has been written in that code, if we had written that every year there's only 2% inflation, max, then that is exactly what will happen. Again, blockchain is freedom. The other day I spoke to a friend of mine about organizing a kitesurfing trip, because we're both um, passionate kitesurfers. It was much to my surprise that in the following days, I was inundated by advertisements about kitesurfing on all kinds of different platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Amazon, on Google, everywhere. It seemed that some, someone was listening in on our conversations. And then I realized the data we produce is no longer ours. The things we say, the things we write, the websites we use, the things we like, all of that now belongs to the big tech corporations. They own our data and they own us. We have become the product. What if there was a way to reappropriate the ownership of that data? How can we get that data back? Again, blockchain can help us. With blockchain, we take back control. We eliminate the intermediary, in this case, the big tech companies, and give ourselves control over our data again then we can decide who we share our data with and what we want to do with it. Again, blockchain is about freedom. Many times people ask me why I decided to move into the blockchain industry. And indeed, since 2014, that is uh, when I first came across the subject, since then I've been fascinated by it. And sometime later I decided to leave my well-paying job in investment banking to pursue my passion full-time. It was the first time I really experienced purpose. And that is my advice to you. Always follow purpose. Don't be tempted by short-term financial gain. Don't let them lure you. Don't let them buy you. Also, don't be that guy. <laughs> Instead, Follow your passion. And that doesn't have to be blockchain. It could be any field. And I'm sure you will find 
that field for you eventually. But until then, if somebody asks you, oh, blockchain, that's about crypto and Bitcoin, right? Tell them, no, blockchain is freedom. Thank you. <laughs>